And for the gentleman. All you can eat. All you can eat. Join us as we take a look at the top 10 Golden Corral buffet facts you didn't know. Because what do we really know about this all you can eat shop of plentiful good eats? Yes, you really can eat as much as you want. It's all you can eat. I gotta get my money's worth. If you are at a Golden Corral and you want to take another trip to the buffet and grab another plate of food, you can. No one is stopping you. It doesn't matter if it's your second helping or your 20th. This isn't like those cell phone plans that tell you you were getting unlimited data, but after a few gigs, they slow down the speed. At the Golden Corral, all you can eat means all you can eat. Eat as fast or as slow as you want to. But wait, some of you might remember a news story that went viral back in 2017 about a man who was suing Golden Corral for $2 million because he was kicked out of one of their restaurants after eating a jaw-dropping 50 pounds of food. What? You know how they tell you not to believe everything you read online? Well, that's very true. And in the case of this story, it turned out to be a hoax. We aren't sure if the claim that he ate 50 pounds of food is true or not, but the report that the restaurant kicked him out because he was going to town on their buffet definitely is not. All you can eat wasn't always their thing. See you in spring, toes. Although these days Golden Corral is known for serving up a ton of food options to the masses, and in large increments, that wasn't always their focal point. In reality, they were pretty much a regular restaurant serving portion after portion for a price. Specifically, they were a steakhouse, and they did quite well under that format for quite some time. They first opened up in Fayetteville, North Carolina way back in 1973, and their steakhouse was fairly successful. Who doesn't like a steakhouse, right? The chain expanded into smaller cities over the next decade, but in the mid-1980s, everything changed. Guests were requesting more appetizers and a bigger salad bar, and this prompted Golden Corral to transform. They introduced a 400-seat, 11,500-plus square foot buffet and grill location with food preparation done in full view of the customers as a way to show the product quality and freshness. Oh my god. At the heart of this reinvention was the Golden Corral Buffet. The buffet featured 160 hot and cold items, a carving station for roast beef, roast pork, sausage, turkey, and ham, and don't forget about dessert. From muffins to cookies, pies, and cakes, your sweet tooth is going to leave very happy. The new concept was a big hit, and as they say, the rest is history. And the company, just like the waistline of its buffet-loving patrons, has continued to expand. There are now 400 and 89 Golden Corral restaurants in 41 states across the country. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Want some bacon? Of course, you know about the Golden Corral buffet for lunch and dinner, but did you know that the chain also offers all-you-can-eat awesomeness for breakfast, too? Like all of their buffets, breakfast is an endless buffet with plenty of delicious options. From pancakes to made-to-order omelets, honey-glazed buns, eggs, waffles, and so many more tasty possibilities. Now, while it is an endless buffet, you need to know that all Golden Corral restaurants stop serving breakfast at 11 a.m. Sorry, sir, we stopped serving breakfast. That all might sound a tad disappointing, but there's no reason to feel down. There's some great news to share. While only some restaurants do breakfast every day, all of the Golden Corral locations do brunch daily. And as we know, brunch incorporates plenty of breakfast-centric food items. Brunch at Golden Corral locations is served from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. each and every day, which means you can get plenty of breakfast yummies all the way till 2 p.m. Yes, at 2 p.m. it ends, but that should be plenty of time to get your breakfast fix. Just remember, no cutting in line. The Chocolate Wonderfall. Amazing or unsanitary? Could we interest you in some chocolate? In 2011, Golden Corral introduced The Wonderfall, a multi-tiered, continuous flowing fountain of chocolate. It sounds like a good thing, right? How many other restaurants offer a chocolate fountain? Probably next to none. The company pushed it big in the news and in their advertising. They even dubbed it the eighth wonder of the world, and over the next few years, hyped up various versions of the fall, including s'mores and triple yum, which came with caramel and white chocolate. The restaurant provides plenty of foods for patrons to dip in the falling chocolate, including fruit, marshmallows, and even cookies. And there's nothing stopping you from covering anything you want in chocolate. Makes it light and frothy.
as one guy found out when he gave chocolate-covered chicken a try. And while chocolate on chicken might not sound appetizing to most folks, it's still pretty cool that if you want to try it, you could, you know? But the problem comes when it isn't just food being dipped in the wonderful. As anyone who has been around a chocolate fountain knows, there's always that one dude who decides to stick his finger in the falling chocolate to nab a quick little taste. The problem with that is, in case you don't know how these fountains work, the chocolate falling down into the base of the structure is the same chocolate that gets pumped back up to the top to flow down again. Which means the chocolate that ran over that stranger's finger is getting recycled back into the flow with the rest of the chocolate. With that in mind, you may never look at a chocolate fountain the same way again. An unruly scene. Look, you have made the nacho machine cry. Remember what we said a few minutes ago about not cutting in line? at Golden Corral? Well, as it turns out, we were pretty serious about that little piece of advice. Now, things can get pretty crazy just about anywhere, especially when low prices are combined together with good food and an astonishing amount of people. Things can get pretty unruly in such conditions. Well, at Golden Corral, things have gotten pretty nasty in the past, and perhaps worse than you could ever have imagined. Just think of the scenes at stores on Black Friday. In 2016, there was a melee that occurred, which led to an actual stand believe it or not, in Louisville, of all places. Run away from the knives! And in Virginia, an actual corral employee, a dishwasher, ran out of the kitchen and attacked two employees and a customer with a skewer normally used to roast chicken. And if that's not enough, a 20-person brawl took place at a New York location. Many wondered if these were wrestlers playing out a scene, but no, they were civilians, probably people intending on getting their money's worth, no matter at what cost to their reputation reputations, and their records. A Golden Corral franchise isn't cheap. I'm gonna buy it. There are 489 Golden Corral restaurants across 41 states, and 451 of them are franchised. And you could be number 452. Well, you could be restaurant 452 if you meet certain criteria, the most daunting of which being the requirement that you or your investment group have a net worth of at least $2.5 million. And at least $500,000 of that needs to be liquid. You know, no biggie, just a little pocket change, right? Right? As far as an initial investment goes in 2018, it would have cost you anywhere between two and seven million dollars, depending on the market and size of the restaurant. Sounds expensive. So now that we've looked at the money going out, what about the money that could be filling your wallet as a franchise owner? In 2018, all the Golden Corral restaurants combined to bring in over $1.7 billion. And the top 41 restaurants had average sales annually of $5.3 million, with 11 of the 41 bringing in even more than that. While becoming one of those top-tier restaurants is possible, the company makes sure to provide a big notice of caution to anyone thinking of getting a franchise. Caution, this figure reflects average sales only, and new franchisees' results may differ from the represented performance, so there is no assurance you'll do as well. If you rely upon our figures, you must accept the risk of not doing as well. At least they make sure the franchisee knows what they're getting into. You can get Golden Corral for takeout. I'll get the food to go. You have a craving for Golden Corral but don't want to sit at the restaurant? Instead, you want to put on your oversized t-shirt and your ripped sweatpants and chow down on some Corral while sitting on your couch marathon watching Stranger Things? No problem, you can totally do that, and Golden Corral has got your back. Depending on where you live, you might be able to have the food delivered. But if that isn't possible, just hop in your car and go pick it up. The restaurant provides you with to-go boxes, and all you have to do is comb the buffet and fill them up with everything you want, then skedaddle out of there. I am loving it. Pricing doesn't work the same for to-go as it does for in-restaurant eating, though. For restaurant patrons, there is a one-time fee, and then the buffet is all yours to enjoy for as long as you can keep eating. For the to-go customer, however, the price all comes down to the weight of the food. You fill your to-go boxes, and the weight determines the price. While it might come out to a bit more money than eating in the restaurant, why not grab more food than you plan on eating that night and keep a box in the fridge for the next night? You know, something to start your next round of binge-watching with. They might be the last buffet standing. Please stay. Golden Corral isn't the only restaurant chain doing the buffet thing, but they very well might end up being the last. 
other buffet restaurant chains such as Western Sizzlin, Old Country Buffet, Sweet Tomatoes, and even Soup Plantation have all taken a hit over the last few years and seen their profits decline, especially now due to the pandemic and the various restrictions that go with it. We've also seen many of these chains file for bankruptcy, some more than once. But not Golden Corral. Things have actually been looking up for Golden Corral, who saw their sales go up in 2017 and have continued to open more restaurants over the last few years. Hey, that's pretty good. What's the key to the Corral's success? Well, it's probably many things, but one would have to be their flexibility and constant willingness to change when they need to. Even though the Golden Corral has been around for 50 years with new restaurant designs and new menu items, they don't feel like a stale old old company. They refuse to get stuck in their ways, and this ability to react to the changing times has served them well. And with many of their competitors heading in the opposite direction, there could come a day where Golden Corral is your only choice when it comes to a chain buffet experience. Not that we would complain, but every superhero needs a nemesis to keep them on their toes. You have to try the rolls. Try it. Another fan favorite aspect of the Golden Corral is their in house bakery. The bakery concept was introduced back in the 1980s when the chain went through its mega transformation and has been around and thriving ever since. It was eventually renamed the Brass Bell Bakery. In fact, every restaurant used to have an actual brass bell that they would ring every 15 minutes to signal to people that a new batch of yummy hot rolls was being taken out of the oven. The bell ringing was a part of the Golden Corral experience up until the last decade or so, and these days it no longer appears to be a requirement in all restaurants. Restaurants. It has been discontinued by me. What is a requirement, however, is for the bakery to produce a large assortment of delicious items, from cookies to muffins to pies to garlic cheese biscuits and more. What's the most popular bakery item, you ask? Well, it's probably the fluffy yeast rolls. The warm, tasty rolls are so popular, you can even find recipes online that claim to replicate the famous Golden Corral yeast rolls for those fans who want to try and make them at home. They're definitely worth a try. Great prices. Cheap food tastes good. Okay, yes, prices may vary depending on the location of the restaurant, but in general, you can eat at Golden Corral for cheaper than almost anywhere else, especially when you consider how much food you can get. Remember, it's as much as you want. For the dinner buffet, you're looking at about $13 during the week and $15 on the weekend. Obviously, depending on how much you eat, the value of your visit may vary. But if you're two people, the odds are that at least one of you will eat enough to make the final tally well worth it. And if you have kids, it gets even better. Not only is there a huge selection, hopefully making it easy to find something your picky eater will say yes to, but the prices for kids are even lower. I can't believe it! For kids ages 9 to 12, you're looking at about $7 each, and for kiddos 4 to 8, they eat for only $6. And if your toddler is under 3 years old, well, they can keep their little Fisher Price wallets in their pockets because they eat for free. Going out to eat as a family can get pretty pricey pretty quickly, but at Golden Corral, you definitely aren't going to break the bank, although you might break the waistband of your pants. Order up more great videos, just tap or click, and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.